So in this video, I want to introduce a new kind of arithmetic function, in particular the divisor sum function. And this basically looks at all of the divisors of some number n and finds the sum of all these divisors. Okay, so in other words, if n is a natural number, then sigma of n, the divisor sum function, is just the sum over all the positive divisors m of our number n, and then we add them all up. That's why m appears in the sum and, and m appears here. So every time we find a divisor, we add that to the sum. So let's just see that in action. Let's look at an example. Let's calculate sigma 10. Well, sigma 10, by definition, that's just the sum over all the positive divisors m of the integer 10, and the sum and is m. So in other words, every time we find a divisor of 10, we just add that to the sum. Well, the divisors of 10, so our divisors of 10 are 1, 2, 5, and 10, because 1 times 10 is 1, 2 times 5 is 10, 5 times 2 is 10, and 10 times 1 is 10. So what does this mean for sigma 10? This means that our sum is, well, when m equals 1, the first term is going to be 1. When m equals 2, the second term is going to be 2. When m equals 5, the third term is going to be 5. And when m equals 4, the fourth term is going to be 10. And 1 plus 2 plus 5 plus 10, that's equal to 18. So in other words, sigma 10 is equal to 18. So in other words, we just look at all the divisors of our arguments. In this case, it was the natural number 10. And we just sum the divisors. OK, let's look at a slightly trickier example. Let's suppose that p is a prime number and that n is a natural number. So this could, for instance, be sigma of uh, 5 to the power 10. What's the number of divisors of that number in particular? What's the sum of those divisors? Well, if I look at p to the n, well, first of all, I want sigma p to the n, which by definition of sigma is just a summation over all the positive divisors m of p to the n, and I want to add those divisors together. Well, what are the divisors of p to the n? I know that 1 divides p to the n. I know that p divides p to the n. I know that p squared divides p to the n. I know that p cubed divides p to the n. And so on and so forth until I get to p to the n. And these are all divisors of p to the n because 1 times p to the n is p to the n. p times p to the n minus 1 is p to the n. p squared times p to the n minus 2 is p to the n, and so on and so forth, I can continue this um, series all the way up to p to the n. So what does that tell me about my sum? That's going to be equal to, let me just write it down here, so that's going to be equal to the first divisor plus the second divisor, which is p, plus the third divisor, which is p squared, plus the fourth divisor, which is p cubed, and so on and so forth, up to p to the power n. Well, this is a finite geometric series. It's a finite geometric series which has common ratio p. So in other words, to get from here, the, the um, if you like, the zeroth term to the first term, I've got to multiply by p. To get from this term to this term, I've got to multiply by p again. And I continue this all the way up to the n plus 1 term. And there are n... There are, so if, if you... Um, count the number of terms, there's n plus 1 terms in total, because if you imagine this is the index p to the power 1, and this goes up to p to the power n, there are precisely n terms here, and therefore n plus 1 in total. So this is um, n plus 1 terms. And our formula for the sum of a finite geometric series says that the sum must be equal to um, the first term, which is a, times 1 minus r to the um, n, or 1 minus r to the power of however many terms there are. So that's going to give me um, 1 minus the common ratio p to the power of n plus 1, because there are n plus 1 terms in total, all divided by 1 minus the common ratio, which in this case is 1 minus p. And I can just put this in a slightly different form by multiplying the top and the bottom by minus 1 to get p to the n plus 1 minus 1 divided by p minus 1. So that's the value of sigma p to the power n, where p is any prime number and n is a natural number. And the reason I use this example is because we're going to be able to derive a formula using this technique, um, which will allow us to quickly find using a nice closed sum formula of sigma of any number, or rather the sum of the divisors of any number using a nice little formula. Okay, so that's all we've got time for today. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks.